Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. And uh, welcome to Peace Through the Word on this Friday morning, the 28th of July, 2023, to Peace Through the Word Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America. An LCMS, a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod congregation. I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation, and it is so good to be able to welcome you this Friday morning as we begin the weekend to this daily devotional ministry. Uh, fully aware that this, you are chiming in worldwide, no matter where it might be, whether it's here in the United States, Europe, Mexico, or even over in Asia and in Africa, over in Kenya. And so, my brothers and sisters, we so much appreciate it, and we thank you tremendously for your participation in this ministry. Uh, it is important to uh, be, it is important to be very much intentional to begin our day uh, with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, that's the purpose of this ministry: is to. Uh, be with Jesus, be into his word, and allow his word to transform our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, my brothers and sisters, this morning, Dr. Martin Luther is going to bring a, the subject to us on um, glorious promises, glorious promises. And then our other devotional is going to talk to us this morning on strengthened and preserved and so I pray that both of those subjects, I pray that both of those subjects will bless us, inspire us, and give us genuine, real peace this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So allow me to please pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we ask that you please give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, that receiving what you have promised, we may love what you have commanded. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you uh, a little um, worship setting. Pray that will bless you this morning as well. So, in the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices. And in the morning, we prepare a sacrifice for you, and we walk. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And so the first uh, subject we're going to look at is from Dr. Martin Luther, and he's going to talk on the subject of glorious promises. The passage of scripture that he uses for his foundation is that of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. And Peter says this, We have the prophetic word more sure. Thanks. So let's see how Dr. Martin Luther unpacks this for us this morning. It says, We too have been called, and we have promises that are much clearer and more glorious than those that the fathers had. Thus Peter praises this good fortune of ours when he says in Second Peter 1 verse 19, and we have the prophetic word more sure. Most assuredly. You will do well to pay attention to this as to a lamp shining in grace and eternal life have been promised and offered to us in a much more glorious way than to them. And it has, and it continues to be so through word and sacrament ministry. For the Son, for the Son has come, and all the promises have been fulfilled. There's nothing left to be done, folks. It, it, it's done. There's no doing. That's the gospel, done. So we hear the Son himself. We have the sacraments and absolution. And day and night the gospel proclaims to us, You are holy. You are holy. Your sins have been forgiven you. You are blessed. But what do we do? We still tremble. And we cling to our weaknesses throughout our life. Shame on us. 
But why are we not aroused by the example of the patriarchs who believed to complete perfection? I reply that they too were weak, just as we are. Although we have richer promises than they had, But it comes to pass, as God's voice says to St. Paul, my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. For God could not retain and fulfill his promises in us if he did not kill that stupid, proud, and smug flesh that dwells within us. Amen. You know, I love Luther. Martin Luther. And the more I learn about him, he just tells it like it is. Thanks be to God. So now our other devotional is that of strengthened and preserved. In the passage of scripture, there is St. Luke chapter 2. St. Luke chapter 2, verses 29 through 32. And we have this account. You may know today, and, and that, that account says this. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. Now Lutherans should be familiar with that. With that. Because you may know today's verses as the Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon. We sing these words after the Lord's Supper, and we do it all the time. Because at that moment, we are just like Simeon. As a faithful Jew, Simeon knew his sin. As a faithful Jew, Simeon knew his sin and God's promise of a Savior. When the infant Jesus was brought to the temple, Simeon's waiting ended as he held the long-promised Redeemer in his arms. Having seen the salvation of the world, he prayed that he could now die in peace. Like Simeon, we have also seen God's salvation and held his body and blood, given and shed for our forgiveness. We are even more blessed than Simeon, though because the Lord graciously gives to us his body and blood, not just to hold, but also to take into ourselves when we when we receive the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. As the sacrament ends, the pastor prays that it strengthens and preserves you to life everlasting. Those aren't just words. Those are promises by God. Nothing can compare to the nourishment that this meal provides. Amen. That's why word and sacrament is so critical, not word or sacrament. Like you you don't believe in the sacramental ministry. Shame on you if you don't. Okay, it's very much scriptural, very much scriptural. To avoid it is unscriptural. By this gift, we are at peace, strengthened, and preserved, which is critical. Allow me to please pray. So, dear Lord, thank you for strengthening and preserving us through this holy meal, holy communion. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, we want to profess the Christian faith and we use the words of the Apostles' Creed, so together we profess. I believe in God the Father uh, Almighty. Uh, uh, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in his son Jesus Christ, who was crucified and lived and died. He descended into hell. He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And so brothers and sisters taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, We are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that our doings may be preserved from sin and our life sanctified and our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you. For into your hands we commend all things, let your holy angels be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, thank you so very much for chiming in this morning to Peace of the Word. I pray that you have received a blessing from it.